1986, April was designated as the month of the military child, acknowledging the significant role that military youth play in the community. And according to the Department of Defense, there are close to one million military children. Joining us now to talk about the importance of this month is Kelly Williams of the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic. Kelly, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic. Uh, we have such a significant military community here in San Diego. We do. So our clinic was designed to support post 9-11 veterans, um, active duty service members and their family. And we provide mental health care services and case management, psychotherapy, um, psychiatry, as well as substance abuse. And so often that we look at members of the military, we say thank you for your service, mm -hmm. thanks for what you do for us. Right. But there's a lot more people generally behind that one individual. There's a family, there's a wife, a husband, a kids, and that sort of thing. Tell us what the experience is of children and the challenges that they face when they're part of a military family. Yeah, did you know that uh, the military family actually moves three times as much as a mm. civilian family? So that's a lot of adjustments, tons of transitions. So when one member serves, the whole family really serves. Yeah. And that's what our organization stands to do, is we provide services for everyone in between, not just that service member. And they're definitely impacted by those moves and, and all those changes that they have to deal with, lose, you know, having a parent away or having both parents mm -hmm. away. Um, your clinic provides mental health services. Um, Talk about some of those services that you provide resources. Yes, so in addition to general psychotherapy or family therapy, we also provide groups, group therapy, and this whole summer we'll be doing a real uh, kickoff for providing resources for people who are PCSing. Um, sorry, that's military jargon for that they're transitioning or relocating, mm -hmm. as well as providing other groups for, uh, act, for active duty uh, women veterans who are serving and just other teens or children's programming that could help the family adjust more. Can you tell us a little bit about what some of the biggest challenges are for kids? This you know, obviously depends on age, but um, talk about moving, for example, going to yeah. new schools, mm -hmm. meeting new people. You talk about, you know, uh, it's been known for a long time. People who are in military families have had to deal with that, but wh what's the experience like? What are some of the kids' um, biggest challenges? Yeah, I think like anyone moving to a new area, children will struggle to adjust to have to make new friends, adjust to new schools, um, realizing there might be a difference of where they ended last year and they're picking up this mm -hmm. year, and just adjusting to a new environment. Like, I mean, I don't think San Diego is the worst environment <laughs> to have yeah. to adapt to, but it's still different from where they may have come from before. Yeah. Absolutely, or where, the, where they may be going. Exactly. Um, do you, is this something that's accessible to all military families? Yes, we service all post 9-11 veterans and their family. What are some of the things that may have changed over the years? We're no longer in an active war, for example. Is that, has that changed the experience of, of military children and families versus uh, you know, times maybe in the last 20 years that's been different? Yeah, I would say that it does, I would say that it's definitely different, right? If you have a if you have a family member who you know is in war, mm -hmm. uh, compared to maybe that you know your family has maybe shore duty and they're mm -hmm. not in an active war. But I think there's this constant struggle still on both ends, whether you ha know that your service member is actually out there fighting or that they are stateside and mm -hmm. having uh, their you know services here. What can we do to help our you know our our neighbors who are military families and maybe some of the kids who are part of that family as well? Is there anything that we can do do as civilians? Well, I think that's a great question because that's actually why I'm here today also, is because this is the month of the military child. Uh, yesterday was Purple Up Day, so you might have noticed a lot of people wearing purple more. And so this is just a month that we celebrate the resiliency of the military child specifically and all of the sacrifices that they take as they serve with their family member. And you have this event coming up tomorrow, is that right? Yes, we do. What's going it, on? It is our third annual We Heart Our Mail event, and we will be providing drive-through resources for family members. Um, we're giving out things like books, free produce, and other items mm -hmm. from local partner organizations that we are partnering with. Because one of the challenges, too, we don't really talk about as well is like compensation for military right. members. Not just the sacrifice they make, but, but there's a, a lack of income in a lot of cases, yes? Yes, there's a, different, there's a definite difference between if your first day of serving versus if you've been there 20 years. Sure. And so that financial impact in a city like San Diego, yeah. I think, can definitely be felt. So that's also why it's so great that we have resources like case management at our clinic, so we can help fill other gaps that uh, other p organizations might not be able to provide. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Kelly. We appreciate you, you coming in today.